how to repair. Hey, Raj. Hi, Joe. Thanks for the introduction, and thank you, Jim, for the invitation to uh, be here. Uh, so the talk is visceral and renal artery aneurysms, when and how to repair. I don't have any uh, disclosures. So an aneurysm is really defined as an increase of about 50% of the diameter from what would be expected. So looking at various uh, arteries, uh, if you have a greater than 50% increase, you can, you can define that as uh, being uh, aneurysmal. Uh, obviously, there are true and false aneurysms. True aneurysms involve all layers of the arterial wall, uh, whereas uh, false don't, like, uh, like pseudoaneurysms, which are probably a little bit more urgent and, uh, and may need to be fixed uh, sooner. Uh, just some definitions of visceral artery aneurysms. Uh, these are really uh, aneurysms of the celiac, superior, and inferior mesenteric arteries and, and their branches. Uh, they're relatively rare. Only about 5% uh, affect the splanchnic uh, arteries, and the, and the prevalence in the general population is relatively low also. Uh, just showing you a schematic of the distribution and frequency, the most common ones we see are the splenic followed by hepatic SMA, and then going down the list, uh, they get uh, rarer and rarer, and I can tell you in practice is pretty much uh, what we see also. Uh, Splenic artery aneurysms is the, is the most common type. Uh, it's still relatively rare, more common in women. And it's usually saccular, uh, roughly about two centimeters in uh, diameter on uh, diagnosis. Uh, obviously, there's a very high risk of rupture, rupture for splenic uh, artery aneurysms, especially uh, things, uh, people talk about the double rupture phenomena where you, where you uh, rupture into the lesser sac, and that may give you a little bit of time to get the diagnosis and then, and then subsequently uh, be able to uh, treat them, otherwise they have another real rupture into the free peritoneal cavity and, and that can be uh, life-threatening. So there's a significant mortality from a ruptured splenic artery aneurysms that can be difficult to, uh, to uh, diagnose. And uh, these are ones that we definitely want to fix early on, especially in uh, pregnant women. So indications for repair for splenic, obviously an absolute indication if you're ruptured or, or, or symptomatic. And in uh, pregnant women uh, or or those uh, who do uh, uh, want to have children, they do, or who are childbearing age, do warrant uh, treatment. Less stringent uh, uh, indications are enlarging or greater than two centimeters. Is that really absolute? And also in patients with portal hypertension or candidates for uh, liver transplantation. All pseudoaneurysms should be repaired uh, irrespective of size, secondary to increase of uh, rupture. Uh, there are many open and, uh, and endovascular options. I mean, the splenic, uh, the spleen really tolerates it relatively well. You can, you can exclude ligate, splenectomy, a distal pancreatectomy, laparoscopic ligation, obviously. I think most of us really prefer doing them uh, endovascularly if possible. That can be uh, either coiling, uh, glue injection, thrombin, onyx, uh, uh, potentially also putting in a covered scent, although that may be a little bit more challenging due to the uh, tortuosity. Uh, the usual technique, you know, most of us do uh, femoral access with a five-front sheet, and then we'll probably we'll cannulate the SMA celiac or the renals, depending on what we're, what we're treating, and we may even use a microcatheter, and then we'll do whatever therapy we had uh, planned to do. Uh, this was the lady that I took care of. Uh, uh, re relatively, uh, I think the, an the aneurysm me measured about two and a half centimeters or so. Uh, she was about 50, said she wanted to have children, so I said, okay, well, I mean, we we're, were probably going to treat it anyways. I mean, it was uh, relatively large, so... Uh, got a microcatheter, just like I described, all the way out. You know, the, we got into the outflow tract, called them, and then, and then called the aneurysm sac. Uh, there is some discussion, and I know when, I, when we used to talk about it here, when I was a fellow, whether you need to uh, embolize the entire sac, or do you just get the inflow and the, and the outflow? Uh, I think people probably have different views uh, on that, because, you know, the more coils you put, the more expensive it gets, and uh, can be difficult uh, 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 observing them uh, postoperatively also. Uh, hepatic artery aneurysm is the second most common type. Uh, the indications for treatment include uh, symptomatic, if you have non-atherosclerotic aneurysms, multiple aneurysms, and aneurysms greater than two centimeters in a good risk patient uh, with life expectancy greater than two years, or someone who's undergoing a liver transplant. Uh, treatment options, I think they're all pretty similar. You can ligate, ligate with uh, bypass, hepatectomy, or a, a, a liver transplant. You should ligate or coil only if the portal vein is patent. Uh, the proper hepatic artery does require re, uh, reconstruction, whereas the common hepatic does not, because if you have a good GDA, you should be able to uh, tolerate uh, ligation of the common hepatic artery. Uh, superior mesenteric artery is the third most common. Again, indications for repair very similar. Symptomatic size greater than two centimeters and options for treatment, bypass, ligation, coiling. This is a lady that I actually took care of uh, when I was on staff here at, uh, at Sinai, a relatively young uh, drug user, and uh, she had a mycotic uh, SMA uh, you know, pseudoaneurysm, and I treated her with ligation. It was it was relatively distal, and uh, and uh, she did uh, she did really well, and she tolerated that uh, very nicely. 
Uh, celiac artery, again, pretty rare, uh, but uh, this was a case that we recently performed uh, uh, at our practice. You usually see them uh, in patients that have other aneurysms. So this patient had an aortic aneurysm that was, that was fixed. He, he was brought back for the celiac artery aneurysm. And here you can see the splenic was coiled and a stent graft uh, down here was placed uh, into the uh, common hepatic artery and the patient did very well. Uh, talking about renal artery aneurysms, it's also relatively rare. The natural history is, uh, is poorly uh, defined. I think uh, diagnostic evaluation is, is important for all of these visceral aneurysms that we're treating, including the uh, renal aneurysms, whether it's a CT, MR, you know, plus minus diagnostic angiography to really get a good idea of the anatomy. And in renal aneurysms, you may also want to see if, you know, what what location is this, uh, is, this, uh, is this supplying? If you do have to embolize it, if you do have to shut it down, how much of the kidney are you, are you going to lose? So you, you, may, you may elect to do a renal scan and look at different branches and, and, uh, and see what they're, what they're supplying. Indications for repair, again, size greater than two centimeters, women of childbearing age, and hypertension associated with stenosis or uh, fibromuscular dis dysplasia. Many options, again, uh, I think very similar to all the other visceral artery aneurysms. You can do vein patch an angioplasty, surgical bypass, ex vivo reconstruction, nephrectomy. Uh, this is a uh, case that I, uh, you know, unfortunately I don't have any intraoperative pictures, so I did have to uh, borrow some from, uh, from journals, but uh, here's, a, here's an aneurysm that was, that was resected and a, and a vein patch was placed uh, on that, just a schematic diagram. Uh, you can also do uh, surgical bypass with uh, exclusion. So here's, a, here's the aneurysm in, you know, uh, uh, like a type 2 aneurysm here at the, at the branch point. And this patient underwent ligation and then uh, bypass. I have to uh, credit Dr. Alozi for, uh, for these pictures. I think this was, uh, this was his case. Uh, ex vivo repair also is, a, is an option where you have a uh, aneurysm really near the hilum. Um, I think instead of losing the kidney uh, and just doing a nephrectomy, an attempt should be made at ex, uh, ex vivo repair and then, and then reimplantation uh, of, that, of that kidney. Uh, many options for endovascular repair. Uh, you know, the choice of therapy really depends on location and comorbid conditions. You can use covered stents, embolization, coils, uh, liquid embolic agents. Again, depending on, on where the aneurysm is really located, you do require proximal and distal seal zone for a covered stent. It can be difficult with, uh, with tortured, tortuous vessels, and especially, especially with the renal arteries where you have them at bifurcation points. It can be a little challenging to, uh, to place a covered stent. Uh, many different techniques that have been described, uh, balloon-assisted coiling, where you may have a wide neck, you place a, uh, you place a balloon across it, you get into the aneurysm, and then, and then you coil it off, and that uh, prevents your, uh, your uh, coils from uh, embolizing into areas where you don't really want them to, uh, to go. Uh, Balloon-assisted embolization, this is a patient who was done using onyx, again, very similar idea. Uh, a stent assisted coiling. This is a this is a case again that was uh, that was performed here at uh, at Sinai. I had a 2.5 centimeter renal artery aneurysm. Uh, here is the angiogram. Uh, shows close to the bifurcation point. Had a uh, stent, just a self expanding. Uh, uh, sorry, a balloon expandable, just a bare metal stent. Wasn't a covered stent placed across it, and then we were able to get through it and place coils. And that was the that was the end. Uh, that was the outcome for that. This probably could have been potentially done using uh, using a balloon assisted coiling uh, also. Uh, so renal artery aneurysm is a rare disease. It's complex anatomy. They're younger patients. Uh, surgical repair is the gold standard, but endovascular therapy is safe. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through two studies real fast. I know we're running short of time. So this was a retrospective review in 2008, looking at about 55 patients. And they gave us kind of some recommendations as to how to manage them. If you look at the aneurysms that they found, 52 were found incidentally. Uh, 30 out of 55 were splenic and then, and then renal common hepatic and, and going, down the, going down the line. And their recommendations were, were kind of similar to, uh, uh, to what, I've, what I've mentioned before. Uh, for splenic artery, uh, you, know, you, can, you can ligate if in the hilar lo location of splenectomy is uh, uh, recommended. As far as renal artery aneurysms go, you know, they try to see, they, tr they recommend don't do a nef nephrectomy unless, unless you know, your pa patient's unstable or if they've had a rupture or if there's a failed attempt at doing the reconstruction. And again, for the hepatic uh, artery, you know, just be careful. You can ligate uh, the common hepatic artery, but you do need to examine the liver. And if the liver doesn't look good, you may have to do a uh, bypass. Uh, the last paper is actually a paper from here, uh, from, uh, from Dr. Marin and, and Dr. Satsev, and they looked at their experience with the surgical versus uh, endovascular, where they looked at uh, 59 patients, about you know, 35 were endo, 24 were open. Uh, average size of the endo was a little bit smaller than the, than the open uh, aneurysm. Uh, they were endocandid if they had good inflow and outflow vessels that were accessible and they had good collateral flow. 
and ultimately the decision was left at the discretion of the, uh, the surgeon. Uh, they noticed that endovascular treatment had a decreased length of stay, two days versus, versus six days for an, for an open repair. Uh, primary treatment success was 89% in endovascular group, but all second attempts were successfully embolized. Uh, so postoperative mortality was similar, but not statistically significant. And their conclusions were that endovascular intervention is effective in treating uh, visceral artery aneurysms. It is associated with decreased length of stay, and a primary failure may even be managed successfully with repeat endovascular uh, intervention. I think you, know, you do have to plan these cases out well, so review detailed imaging to delineate anatomy and the location of the aneurysms. You should know the collateral circulation to prevent end organ ischemia. Uh, also be aware of alternative inflow sources if you do need to revascularize or if technical issues uh, arise. Uh, surveillance is really mandatory, particularly in endovascular cases, baseline six months yearly. Uh, duplex after an open repair to look for restenosis and an MR angiography uh, after coiling and onyx because the CT may not show you, uh, uh, may not give you a good picture. Thank you very much. So.